I think that the model of machines taking over our jobs, while that's not, it doesn't happen maybe as radically as we might have feared in years past, I think it's a it's a good thing for us to kind of train ourselves to kind of looking behind us to see if machines are catching up, simply because that is in a way what's happening, whether it's a machine or simply the world is changing, period. Um, I think it's it's basically a good a good thing for all of us to be doing is kind of looking over our shoulders, essentially. And I know that that's not really what anybody wants to hear. We've just all been through a collective trauma with COVID mm-hmm. over the last few years. And really, everybody just kind of wants to take a breather um, yeah. and kind of relax. Unfortunately, we, we kind of can't um, with respect yeah. to our careers. I mean, everybody needs to be thinking about what are the next skills that are going to be necessary because what's going to be obsolete. And it's not that you need to make massive changes all the time, but I mean, ChatGPT is actually a really, really good example. You can use me as a journalist, right? So I'm looking at ChatGPT and I'm saying, okay, right now ChatGPT cannot write my Wall Street Journal column. Will it be able to in five years? Probably. So what aspect of my job won't it be able to do in five years? And the answer to that is, will the Wall Street Journal allow my column to go out with just ChatGPT writing it in five years? And the answer to that is probably no. But they will still need me to read it and make sure it's accurate, fact check it, edit it. Um, That's still going to be needed. I will still be needed for that. So I better make sure I know how to edit. Um, Right now, I, I have an editor. That's two people's jobs right now. Um, it may go down in the next five years. In fact, it probably will go down to one person's job. So that's the kind of thing everyone needs to be doing is looking ahead like that and saying, my job is probably what's two people's jobs is probably going to go down to being one person's job. And I better learn that additional skill set. So that's the future of talent. (laughs) You know, we have to all be doing that and looking kind of over our shoulders and saying, not necessarily you need to overhaul your entire career, but you need to be coming as broadly skilled as possible so that whether it's a machine that's going to be taking things over or you need to think about if there were disruption, like where can I be as broadly skilled as possible so that I actually become indispensable in my organization? Um, and the layoff conversation is, is actually a whole other conversation we could have. But if your organization were to have a layoff, and they were going to need to redeploy people or lay them off, where could you be as skilled as possible so that you could play many different roles within an organization? Because the future, going back to the very original question you had, in terms of redesigning jobs, jobs are going to be components. It's not going to be like one person doing one specific job. It's going to be, okay, well, we have different kind of micro jobs within an organization where we could deploy you into job A, but we could also deploy you into job B or C or D or E. And the more of those letter jobs that you could do, the more indispensable you're going to be. Everything you just said is music to our ears. I figured. You guys are the disrupted workforce. So we are. And that and but but that spirit of 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 self assessment and inquisition and being yes. able to look at technology and say, as you did so uh, precisely what does it do now? What's it going to do in five years? Mm -hmm. What does this mean for me? Where do I need to lift up or reskill or hone my skills? And how does this, you know, all come together and then look and, and then encouraging everybody else to do the same.